All right, welcome back to the AI4 2022 Healthcare Summit. Our next speaker is Tom Wilson. He is VP Vertical Markets at GraphCore. Please join me in welcoming Tom to our virtual stage. Hello, I'm Thomas Wilson, VP of Business Development for Healthcare AI at GraphCore. And I'm going to be speaking today about some of the ways that GraphCore is helping to enable AI within healthcare. To start out with, I'm going to quickly review some research I've been doing recently, looking at the use cases that have been drawing a predominant share of VC funding lately. Well, this seems a bit odd in a technical track, the goal is to focus in on these use cases as important growth areas, which will then help to focus our attention on specific technical problems within those use cases. What we'll also show as we dig into the ML model architectures is that there is a clear high level trend in the use of a relatively short list of machine intelligence model types and architectures. This is useful in deciding how to drive enablement strategy across as much of the healthcare AI space as possible. We've also identified some key challenges faced by healthcare AI teams and understanding how these challenges specifically impact the customers that we, that we work with is helping to shape our enablement strategy for healthcare in general. Lastly, we'll look at how we are helping to address these challenges with a focus on the challenge surrounding time to train. As part of that, we'll have a customer case study as an example. It's interesting to track where the venture capital is going for a couple of reasons. One, it shows where the growth is likely to be, and where the focus is for specific AI-based applications. And contacting these startups will also be a good source to understand the blockers or impediments that these AI teams are experiencing in accomplishing their goals. Now, along with contacting these startups, we're engaging with different opportunities and enterprise customers, for example, in Big Pharma, to test the problem space in that, in that context as well. And ultimately, our job, as we see it at GraphCore, is to do what we can to remove those impediments for those AI teams. Now, looking at the data, it's clear that Computational drug discovery is a hotspot, and that's not surprising given the significant opportunity for AI to dramatically alter how new leads for drugs are developed. Now, it's a bit misleading to see it as a homogeneous use case space because, in fact, there is a wide range of sub areas and sub use cases within this involving dry lab versus wet lab, target discovery and validation, protein protein interaction, ligand protein interaction, protein shape modeling drug repurposing, et cetera. Now, another large and related area is, of course, analytics for genomics, and another is patient data processing. Now, if you dig into research papers and blogs across most of these use cases, not just the top three I just mentioned, you find recurring themes in ML model architectures and trends. So as mentioned in the previous slide, across the top three use cases identified, we've seen a common interest in a short list of ML models and architectures. Autoencoders play a major role across a wide range of use cases. RNN, LSTM approaches have been more commonly used up to now, but have their limitations. Other examples include variational autoencoders. For example, they've been used in some medical imaging analytics. Another key area of exploration has been for different kinds of generative purposes. For example, making use of generative adversarial networks in that case. Natural language processing or NLP, of course, is a key area making use of bird size models, depending on the complexity of the NLP problem, right up to GPT style NLP models. We are also now seeing an evolving use of transformers for encoding purposes beyond their original NLP use case. BERT type transformers are being applied to what some have called the language of proteins to learn and be trained on known protein sequence space and then used to generate de novo protein sequences. Within vision analytics, we're seeing a bit of a sea change towards transformer-based models like VIT. And of course, knowledge graphs are becoming increasingly important and are the foundation of data across a range of use cases, and we'll be talking more about them later. In fact, it's probably worth spending some time just focusing in on knowledge graphs. Now, the biomedical sector, whether it's drug discovery, patient data processing, or other use cases, is making increasing use of knowledge graphs to capture ontologies and relationships across diverse data. The main item of interest here is the triple, which describes the relationship or the edge between two entities or vertices or nodes. For example, drug N treats disease M or in drug discovery, molecule N alters target M. Ontology 
re refers to one of the key mechanisms to encode the semantics of an area of human knowledge in a machine readable manner. Now, part of the challenge of biomedical knowledge graphs is to combine multiple different and possibly overlapping ontological systems into a common knowledge graph. Now, many of the triples in knowledge graphs in practical use are incomplete. So one of the main uses of machine learning is to make link predictions amongst incomplete triples. So for that, you need knowledge graph embedding models. The knowledge graph um, embedding model uh, encodes the, the high dimensional um, data space of the knowledge graph into um, more low, low dimensional embeddings into what's called latent space. GNNs or graph neural networks are an ideal fit for this kind of application because they help to faithfully represent uh, the no to no relationships within the graph. Graph neural networks perform particularly well in various tasks involving graph based data. With the rapid accumulation of biological data organized in knowledge graphs or some other graph based form, GNNs are becoming more and more important for machine learning in the biomedical space. It's not surprising then that reviews like the one shown here indicate an ongoing and rapid increase in the number of investigations involving GNN model architectures across a whole range of use cases as shown here. A graph core, we are seeing a similar trend and a great deal of interest in exploring GNNs in an increasing use of graph-based data. And in fact, while the work is still quite nascent, it is clear that the early work making use of GNNs is uncovering some key performance issues around training GNNs on traditional processor architectures. Now, as mentioned previously, one of the key opportunities for GNNs is to improve the predictive quality of machine learning using knowledge graphs. Fortunately, as part of developing new approaches, there is an increasing number of open source knowledge graphs across different use cases to experiment with. In this slide, I've compiled just a subsample of some open source knowledge graphs. There is clearly a more extensive set out there, but it was interesting to show at least a subset mapped out across these use case areas, these three use case areas, with some notion of their relative sizing. Now, there's no standard way to size knowledge graphs, so I took an approach to put them into rough size bins by combining some view of their edge and node counts. Node and edge counts for each size is small, medium, or large. And then combinations of those counts, for example, large, large, where both edge and node counts were large, were created for a total of five size bins. So there's large, large, or large, medium, or medium, large, etc. Now, since this is just a subsample of the available knowledge graphs out there, there's nothing that we can infer here in terms of trends of knowledge graph sizes for the different use case areas. But it does indicate the activity in creating knowledge graphs for the biomedical use cases and the apparent need for efficient and high quality predictions that is likely required. Now, just to take a step back, we've touched on some clear trends in terms of model architectures that span the healthcare use case space in the form of transformers and graph neural networks, but also as part of addressing the machine learning needs in this marketplace, GraphCore has also been working to identify some key problem statements, at least at a high level, to be sure that we're doing the right things with our enablement strategies. Now, there are two key problems that we've identified and confirmed through a series of interviews with some sample customers. So there are a couple key challenges that we've confirmed through interviews with different customers. First of all, it has to do with around time to train and or training costs, which are kind of related. The longer time to train with the models that they're working with, the transformers and the GNN models, is restricting their time for experimentation and lowering the overall productivity for the team. It's actually potentially blocking areas of research that they would like to pursue. The training costs are also exceeding their initial projections due to just an increasing complexity of the models or size of the data sets and size and complexity of the knowledge graphs. They're also seeing a higher churn perhaps in the data set content requiring more frequent pre-training, more limited access to cloud service provider processor resources than they had originally anticipated. As you'll see in the next few slides, GraphCore is addressing this issue with faster times to train with a more optimized processing architecture for the kind of workloads that we've been talking about. They're also seeing a significant shortfall of machine learning resources and experience. It's a highly competitive AI startup environment um, where they're all vying for the same relatively limited talent pool. They're definitely more use cases and experiments that they can possibly resource at this point in time. They're also finding 
a lack of familiarity with the new machine learning areas like graph, graph neural networks, knowledge graphs, knowledge graph embedding models, um, etc. Now, GraphCore is taking different sorts of enablement strategies on this front to assist their customers with meeting the challenges of not as much machine learning resource or expertise as they would like. But first, let's have a look at how we can help with time to train. So as mentioned previously, we're helping time to train challenges by providing with the IPU and the IPU pod compute platforms a more optimized architecture for these kinds of machine intelligence workloads. The chart on the left shows public benchmarks from MLPerf results comparing the IPU pod 64 versus two DGX A100s. Throughput here reflects the time to train advantage, and we show about a 2x advantage in performance. This is reflected, for example, in a customer case study we'll show shortly. But there are more time to train savings available as one takes full advantage of the IPU processor architecture. On the right, we compare the time to train for an off-the-shelf BERT large versus an IPU optimized BERT base where the IPU optimized version takes better advantage of the IPU architecture. And it shows an accelerated time to the same accuracy. The results are for two different optimizer approaches and show that time to accuracy, i.e. time to train, can be further reduced by a factor of two by using the IPU optimized BERT transformer approach. For graph neural networks, we have here an example with a temporal graph network, or TGN. This is a framework for deep learning on dynamic graphs as represented as sequences of timed events. This was developed at Twitter, and for a full description, please see the blog written by Michael Bronstein, the link shown on the slide. The IPU is actually very well suited to this kind of graph-based processing, and we continue to see strong results versus GPUs across a range of GNM model types. In this case, the IPU showed significant advantages for both time to accuracy as well as accuracy itself. Now, these examples for transformers and GNNs continue to be proven out in some customer case studies. Here's a, an interesting customer case study that illustrates some of the points mentioned above. Lab Genius is focused on that part of the drug discovery pipeline around selecting and validating appropriate targets to discovering and optimizing leads. In this case, they have been making use of a BERT model, a graph core, to experiment with accelerating use of BERT for improving protein representation. While they had been trying up an approach like this with GPUs, the training time was just too prohibitive for them to really proceed. What they found when taking this approach with IPUs was about a 2x speed up in their training time and the ability to proceed with this area of research. While this IPU approach has not been used in any of their live projects, it has been a very promising future-facing ongoing exploratory exercise. So I'd now just like to take a minute or so at the end just to summarize a few of the key points. First of all, I just want to really emphasize that healthcare and the biomedical vertical market is a strategic focus for GraphCore. And what we've been finding is that there's actually a short list of ML model architectures and approaches that really span a wide range of use cases, all the way from drug discovery to patient data processing. And what we're finding is that transformers and following after them graph neural networks are two very active areas of new ML direction across all of these use cases. And GraphCore is working with customers to take full advantage of the IPU architecture in accelerating time to train and performance for this range of workloads. Also, there are specific enablement strategies that we're putting in place to help complement the ML resources already in place at the customer sites. And we look forward to talking to you about those different kinds of enablement strategies. Thank you very much. Wow, Tom, that was incredible. Thank you so much for sharing your amazing information with us. A big virtual round of applause to you. And for the audience, it's time for you to make your way to your next session. Along the way, make sure you accept your connection requests and take some time to check out our awesome AI exhibits. Thanks so much, and we'll see you around.